let's begin by talking about setting up our geometry to be able to sculpt in Cinema 4D. All right, so I've got Cinema 4D Studio open here. And let's go ahead and take a look at our layout. Right now, I'm in just the standard layout. The difference is I've got a special layout saved. Just the size is different, okay? So it's able to fit inside our recording area. And I've named that DT Startup. You don't have to be concerned about that. You can just start from your standard layout. Uh, so the first thing we want to talk about is how do we get geometry in here and be able to start sculpting? What do we need to do to it? Well, it's very, very simple. So we go ahead and create our geometry in any other way. So we need some sort of a starting mesh. So we can start from something as simple as a cube. We could just modify the attributes of the cube in the normal way. Okay. If you wanted to do more extensive modeling on this, you could. But the key thing is you want to have it uh, go ahead, have it um, editable. So once you've got your attributes changed, you can go ahead and make that editable. So now it's a polygon object. And now to begin our sculpting process, we need to add a sculpting tag. So the way to do that is we'll just go ahead and go to our uh, sculpting layout, which again, I have a DT sculpting, which is just the exact same as the regular sculpting, just the size is different. So go to DT sculpting. You can see we have a lot of grayed out tools here. So we need to actually add a sculpting tag. And to do that, all you have to do is hit the subdivide. So the first time you hit subdivide, it's going to add a sculpting tag. If you already have a sculpting tag on there, it's going to go ahead and subdivide the mesh. But you can see now that we're starting to get these tools available to us. If we jump over to our objects tab, you can see with our cube selected that we have our sculpt tag available right here. Okay, you can see that there's not a lot of options in the sculpt tag, but this is what enables us to be able to sculpt on our cube. Now, some of the things to think about when we're creating geometry to begin sculpting uh, you may want to start from something very, very simple like a cube or a sphere, or you may want to model out something a little bit more extensive and then just add the detail using the sculpt tools. Okay, that's another way to go. Um, there are a few things to think about, though. One of the things to think about is you can use uh, triangles and ingons, but you want to really stay to uh, quads when you're creating your sculpted mesh or sculpting mesh. You want them to be fairly evenly spaced and evenly sized, for instance. You don't want um, a lot of polygons, a lot of small polygons on one portion of your model necessarily when, when another portion of your model has the very few large polygons. Because as you start to subdivide to get a detail on the area with larger polygons, you're going to get a lot of unnecessary polygons in the area that has that's you know really packed with polygons. So you want to think about evenly spacing those uh, polygons across the surface. You want to make them fairly evenly sized. So nice square shapes. The reason for this is as you start to subdivide these, these square faces are going to be subdivided into four. So you can see here we've got one quad. It's going to be split into four quads. Okay, And as that splitting process happens, you want it to stay fairly smooth and even so that as you start to sculpt the detail that you want, you can get that detail uh, into your model. So those are just some things to uh, to think about. If you're working with geometry like a, for instance, a sphere, let's say. So if we dropped in a sphere that you thought that might be better to start with, um, you may want to think about not using the standard sphere with the poles on both ends. As you subdivide this sphere, you can see where we have these long thin triangles here, and then we have a pole where all of these points are coming in. So as we start to subdivide and subdivide and subdivide, if you try to, to sculpt detail up here at the top where these poles are, uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because you have all these points coming into to one point. And the more you subdivide, the more edges are going into that point. Okay, and you've got the same thing on the other end. So one of the things that you can do is just to change the type of sphere that you're using. You could change that to a hexahedron, for instance, which get, would give you a more evenly spaced topology with quad geometry. And you can see there's no uh, real poles. And so you're going to get a much better result working with something like this and trying to sculpt across it than you might with uh, something with uh, a pole on both ends. So just something to think about as well is the uh, the topology of your mesh. Okay. Also the UVs. Now you can do UVs at, at other times, but um, once you have your model created, you may want to go ahead and create a UV layout at this point. It's not completely necessary, but if you want to have complete control over the UVs, that may be something you want to do. Now, you can start from something as simple as a, a plain sphere and begin sculpting it, but you can also create a little bit more detail in your initial modeling phase. So if I turn off the sphere and turn on this creature base, you can see I've actually started from a sphere 
and just done some simple extrudes. I decided, okay, I want him to have a, I want this creature to have a tail coming out. I want him to have these sort of legs. Very simple extrusions. Got some front legs. Didn't do anything for the head. Just left it kind of a sphere shape, but kind of built out the main overall shapes that I I thought initially I wanted to have in the model. So you can do that if you want to. If you have a very good idea of what your end result will look like, you can you know go as far as you want and maybe just add the that last little bit of detail in your sculpting. Or you can just work out a basic structure and then do a lot of your shaping and, and concepting uh, with your sculpting tools. So there are, you know, it depends, it all depends on what your purpose is in going through this sculpting process. This, I just kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do, but I didn't really know exactly what kind of detail to add. So I went ahead and built out the main shapes that I knew I wanted to include uh, in the model. Okay. And then we can take this and we want to be actually be able to sculpt it. So I need to hit subdivide. And that has added now a sculpt tag. And now we can begin subdividing this mesh and actually shaping it. So in the next lesson, let's actually talk about what subdivision levels are and how we can work with those, what that means for us as we begin our sculpting process. So we'll go ahead and talk about subdivision levels in the next lesson.